So John, you were the 12th Good Heart Professor to be interviewed for the Indian Scholars Archive. You retired in 2016 as a Lord Justice of Appeal, having risen through the ranks of legal practitioners and the judiciary where you started as a barrister in 1971. You've been the Good Heart Professor of Legal Science for the academic year 2016-17. We are very grateful to you for agreeing to share some reminiscences of your life and your career, as well as your experiences here in Cambridge over the last year. After summarising these activities, I hope that you can give us some thoughts on legal topics and notions with which you've become associated through your published writings, particularly some topical constitutional issues. So could we start with your early life? You were born, Sir John, on the 10th of May 1945, as the Second World War ended. Yes, I was. Uh, that was two days after VE Day. Um, apparently I was late and my mother was very angry that she missed all the parties. Where were you born? In Nottingham, where my mother's parents lived at the time. Were your parents involved in the law? No, they were both doctors. They were both uh, in the Royal Army Medical Corps in the wartime, serving in Egypt. My mother came back uh, pregnant, and uh, uh, she had a, a, one of these strange things that apparently happened in pregnancy. Every time she saw a particular steward on the boat, she was sick, but not otherwise. Yeah, from 1950 to 63, you were at school. First at Durham Cathedral Choir, and then at the secondary Durham School. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any mentors that stand out from that period? Well, there was um, there were very good classics masters at Durham School. One was called Bobby Smithson. The other was a was the school chaplain, a chap called Jack Marston. And I think they, and also the Latin and Greek I learned at um, the, the choir school, the prep school. Um, gave me a love of the classics, the ancient classics, which I've always had. What, at that point, were your main academic interests? Latin. Latin. That's surprisingly, no doubt, but, but uh, it was. I greatly disliked sport and still do. In 1963, you went up to Exeter College. Yes. And you graduated in 1967 with your B.A., and you wrote in 2004 that Lord Birkenhead's biography, and I quote, led me, for the little that it is worth, into the law. And I wonder if you could expand on the circumstances of this very important event in your career. Well, my, my father had a copy of the really rather poor biography of F.E. Smith, Lord Birkenhead, that had been written by Birkenhead's son. And I read it, or perhaps I only read some of it, and I don't recall, as a young teenager, and I, I suppose I thought that as teenagers I perhaps are inclined to, that this was a very um, uh, romantic uh, profession with a lot of contest in it. And I remember announcing to my grandfather on August the 1st of my 13th year that I was going to be a barrister. I know it was August the 1st because that was the day we always went up to North East Scotland for the summer holiday. You list philosophy as one of your interests in who's who. Mm -hmm. Did you read philosophy at Exeter? I read uh, um, what uh, at Oxford is called Greats at Exeter College, Oxford. That is to say, the ancient classics plus philosophy. And the course included quite a lot of modern philosophy. Though I've been particularly interested ever since then in uh, moral and political philosophy, which I think are disciplines that are intertwined with the law and they've made a great deal of difference to my uh, approaches to the law or views about the law, for what that may be worth. Any influential teachers or lecturers that you remember from Oxford? Yes, two. There, were the, there was a young Canadian um, called John Baker who was teaching the modern philosophy, and uh, I don't remember any particular incident, but he was a very good teacher, very clear, very precise, and very encouraging. The uh, ancient history tutor was a, uh, an older man called Dacre Bolston, who was a very well-known teacher amongst classicists. He was a, 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 what you might call an archetypal bachelor don, 
uh, first essay I wrote to him, wrote for him, uh, was on um, Greek colonization, I think. And uh, as was the tradition, um, the undergraduate reads the essay to the, uh, to the Don, who listens and then comments on it. And as I read this essay to Dacre Bolston, he blew sp perfect smoke rings uh, from his very long cigarette holder. And at the end of the essay, he said, this essay is like a souffle that hasn't risen. Now, after that, I'm sure I wrote other bad essays, but none that were quite so boring. So, John, what were your ambitions for a career in law at that time? I don't know if I had I looked ahead very far. Um, I certainly wanted to be a successful court advocate, um, the traditional route for the, for the bar. I don't believe that when I was an undergraduate or a student, a law student, a little later, I had any particular uh, focused ideas about the bench. That came a bit later on. So I, my energies were concentrated on, on uh, practice at the bar in the traditional way, really, of common law chambers. So how did you proceed after your BA? Well, I uh, took the degree, the, the, the Oxford finals in 67. I then when it came to London and um, was already a member of the Inner Temple, having decided to go to the bar, and went through the bar exams and was called to the bar at the Inner Temple in 1970, pupillage 1970-71, and then I remained in the same chambers, the general common law chambers they were, throughout my career until I went on the bench in 1992. The, um, the, as I say, they were general common law chambers, so one saw a very wide range of practice. But uh, uh, after some years, I got more involved in uh, public law, administrative law, because a more senior person in my chambers, now uh, Lord Brown of Eton under Haywood, was the, uh, what's called the Treasury Devil, that's to say the advocate, uh, the member of the bar who is instructed in the uh, major civil cases on behalf of the government, whatever political colour it may be. And so some of the work he couldn't do for the government filtered down to me, and I succeeded him as Treasury Devil in 1984. And after that, I was doing a lot of public law uh, cases, and that became my major interest, I suppose.